Hi, I'm Tara and I am from the Northern Rockies Museum. For those of you who don't know me, we are working with the Hinton Municipal Library this summer and their TD Summer Reading Program to offer you the Exploration Station, one of our stops at the museum this summer. We uh, are also very excited to announce the launch of our new water table. That's on our front deck. You can go to our website to uh, book your time. It's by appointment, um, just to keep everyone safe and socially distanced, and it gives us a chance to disinfect between all of our visitors. It's completely free. We cannot wait to see you. It's super fun and an easy way for little ones to play with water um, without having big ones around them. It's fun. I have fun. My kids have fun. We've had a lot of fun testing it and playing in it. So if you have a chance, please join us. So today we are going to be working on, as it says, I never get this right, over there, animal track casting. Have any of you ever been for a hike and you saw an animal track and you really kind of wanted to take it home, but you didn't know how? Well, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way that you can take home your very own animal track. Um, for those of you who were able to get one of the kits offered by the library, let's go through what's in it. We have some foam board. We have a paper plate, none of which we need right now. You can just set it aside. We also have a tin foil bowl. If you're as a schmuck like mine was, unschmuck it if you can. We also have a bag of kinetic sand for the groans that I just heard from the adults who are watching me because it's kinetic sand and it's in your house. Sorry. It really is the best thing. It's like muddy dirt. Um, the kids promise that they will not spill it on your carpet or in the cracks of your hardwood. A vacuum doesn't, it gets most of it. As I've learned because we've been practicing with this at my house for a few weeks now and um, yeah, it takes a few passes, but it does come out, so sorry. And then we have a bag of plaster of Paris. And then we have a glue stick. And some fun post-it notes from our friends at Best. And then a bunch of papers. Don't worry, it's not homework, it's okay. We're just going to quickly show you what we got. The library has given us their August calendar. And they got a lot of fun stuff going on. You should definitely take a chance at looking at that. And then they also gave us all the activities for the Summer Reading Club. I am only one of the activities. I'm only one of the, uh, the videos and the online fun that the, that the library is doing. They're also doing charming chapters and virtual drumming. And did you know they have prizes? They do prizes every week. Everyone who is watching this video, private message me or put your name and how old you are and a number that we can contact you at to tell you you won. Um, underneath, better to private message me, I give it to the library and then they draw your name and every Monday they say who won. And they're just little prizes, but then they have grand prizes. And the grand prizes, I have to read them because I want to make sure I get this right. So for the preschool age, so zero to five, the grand prize winner gets a Little Tykes two-in-one play food truck. Okay, I got to show you this thing. Look at this thing. You see that thing? I don't count as preschool, but darn it, I want to. And then the kids' grand prize, which is for ages 6 to 17, it's a Nintendo Switch Lite. Yeah, that's what I said. A Nintendo Switch Lite. What? And then the adult grand prize, because parents, if you're watching this with your kids, you count. So you, I don't need to know how old you are. It's okay. But I do need your name and your, ad, and your uh, contact number. And you could win. A Kent Olympia, Olympia 9,000 butanes per hour portable camp stove and utensils. I'm going to show you this one too. Look at that thing. I love camp stoves. I'll take a new camp stove. Of course, I'm not eligible. But you are. So make sure I get your name and uh, just private message the museum. I'll make sure that the library gets your stuff. And uh, you can be in for the weekly draws. And every time your name is put in for a weekly draw, you're into the grand prize draw. So definitely worth it. So let's get a whole bunch of names in there and uh, win somebody that Nintendo Switch Lite or the Play Food Truck. I like it. I'm jealous. Fun. So our friends at Best, who are also helping to host uh, the virtual drumming, and uh, I know that they were making um, calm down jars. I love making calm down jars. They're so fun. Um, they've also given us 
this absolutely gorgeous printout. And we're just going to quickly take a look at this. So what Leanne has given us is that when you're out looking for tracks or you're trying to track an animal, I hunt, so I, I do this. It's about being present in the moment. Because if I'm busy thinking about all the chores I have to do and the work that I was supposed to do, but I didn't do it, and I hope Maddie's not mad at me. Maddie's my boss, for those of you who don't know. Um, am I going to see the deer that is over there pretty far but not moving, but I could take a shot? No. And if I'm out looking for berries, because strawberries are ready, for those of you who haven't been out berry picking yet, wild strawberry season is upon us, and it's only here for about a week. So if you know where they are, and feel free to message me at the museum. I have a few spots I'm willing to share, a few that I'm not, but I have some that I'm willing to share. I can tell you where some really good spots are um, so that you can start uh, collecting some strawberries because wild strawberries are oh, delicious. They're tiny, but they're, they're so good. So a good thing that you can think about is be where your feet are. Think about it for a second. If you are where your feet are, then you can't think about all that stuff that's going to clog up your brain and get in the way of you seeing things, right? So you can take a few slow, deep breaths to help you let go of your worries. Be aware of your surroundings. What do you notice? What sounds do you hear? What can you smell? What clues do you see? And let's look at this picture together. I'll hold it up. So the person in red has their brain full of stuff. And the person in blue is thinking about tracks and trees and sun. Which of those two people do you think is more likely to find an animal track. Animal tracks aren't that easy to find. You need some wet trail, some kind of muddy, not quite muddy, but damp trail. You need clear brush. They're the easiest ones to find. There's lots of animal tracks around us, but sometimes we're just not paying attention. But if you focus in on what you're looking for and nothing else, which one's more likely to find these tracks? Yeah, I think we know. So when you go out, after I show you how to do this, when you go out and you try to find an animal track that you're going to try and cast in the wild, got to be present for it. You got to take those deep breaths and appreciate where you are and what you're doing. And don't worry about that Minecraft game that you've got on pause at home. And don't worry about the chores that aren't quite done. Focus on where you are and what you're doing. You're going to have a lot more fun and probably be more successful. So now for this giant pack. This was designed, all of the tracks were designed by, no, not by me. For those of you who have been with the museum videos during Corn Train and the Learning Railway and now the Exploration Station, you should know darn well, it wasn't me. These were designed by Maddie and they are gorgeous. Like, there's a caribou. She drew all these, I know. That's a moose. So some of these tracks have many, many, many layers. Some of them have three, some of them have two. We've given you enough foam board to do one track. You can pick any one you want, but I am going to be doing the cougar track. Some of them are quite the challenge, like the raven challenge. If you're up for it, give her, I would love to see it. But together, we are going to be working on the cougar paws. So what I would like you to do is get all your stuff ready. You need a pair of scissors to work with me on this. And let's do some animal track casting. So you're going to pick one of the cougar paws. I have chosen the left foot of the cougar. And we're going to grab our scissors. We're just going to cut it out. Okay? So we're going to cut out... Well, I also forgot you're going to need a pen so that you can trace out the paws. These don't have to be perfect. These, if you've been with us, you know that I am not particularly good with scissors. These do not need to be perfect. I hope you are all enjoying the heat that Hinton has now finally found. We have been raining for so long, I wondered if we were ever going to see some summer, but it seems like it has come. We are getting some thunder showers and some big hail, but so long as there's at least a couple of hours of beautiful weather every day, I 
okay with some rain. My garden's okay with rain, but my garden needs the heat too, especially my tomatoes. I would love to hear if any of you are growing anything this year. We are growing chamomile and spinach. I love growing chamomile, it's my favorite. But we're growing chamomile and spinach and um, what else are we growing? Tomatoes and cucumbers. But we wanted to challenge ourselves this year, so we're growing cucamelons. They look like tiny watermelons, but they're cucumbers. I know. They look weird, but I bet they're delicious, and we're all going to enjoy them thoroughly. Because who wouldn't enjoy a fresh cucumber no matter what it looks like? So we're just going to quickly cut out the toes. If you wanted to give the cougar claws, which you can, you can do them with hot glue and just build them up. I don't think that they need claws because as a cat, what kind of claws does a cougar have? Does he have claws that are out all the time? Like a dog? Like a dog, their claws are out all the time. Are a cougar's claws out all the time? No, cougars have what house cats have. They have retractable claws, don't they? Yeah, they're only out when they want them. Otherwise, they don't have them out. So I don't think we need them. But that's just me. If you want your cougar to have claws, Okay, so next we are going to pull out our foam board. Okay, and your pen. And we are going to trace out our cougar paw. So just give it a trace so you know where you're gonna cut. The foam board is a little bit troublesome to cut. So I have scissors, you can use an X-Acto knife. But if you don't want to get help from a parent, then just take your time and use your scissors. And this isn't great, I know, but it's okay. The imprint's there, it's good enough. And then you're also going to trace the inner pieces of the foot because we want it to be three-dimensional so that we can build up to make our very own imprint. So if you push hard enough, it doesn't really matter if your pen works or not. Apparently this pen is in a mood. I'm curious what you guys have planned for your weekend. Do we have anything fun going on? Has anybody been on some Alberta staycations? I know my family and I were talking about uh, Drumheller and going to see the dinosaurs because, I mean, really, who doesn't love dinosaurs? And maybe up to Wembley, to that dinosaur museum, because we've been there a few times. We love it up there. And we've done fishing in the Grand Cache Lake. Successful fishing, mind you. And we've done camping in the backyard. We had our tent in the backyard. We hung up a sheet, and we turned on our projector, and we watched, like, a drive-in movie in our backyard. It was fun. So now we are going to grab our scissors now that we have our traced out cougar paws and we are going to cut and as I said this requires patience don't worry if you're having trouble just ask ask an adult for help it's what they're here for I am not going to make you guys watch me while I cut this I'm going to cut out some of it here And then, through the magic of video, I'm going to show you the finished product. And it's magically turned black. I know, I cheated. I did it ahead of time. So you guys feel free to press pause on me, finish cutting out yours, and then come back. So all we're going to do is use our glue stick once you get all your pieces, and you're going to put the pad and then the toe pads across the top. And just follow your picture so that you know where to put them. And Everybody give a look at this, and you can see I cheated because this is the right foot. This is the left foot. But you didn't want to sit here and watch me cut. So just press pause. I'm not going anywhere. Just press pause. Finish cutting yours out. Get it glued up. We have this, and we will move on to the fun stuff. Cutting stuff. Anyone who's been watching me for a while knows that cutting is not my thing. So I got it done.
Yay me! So I have the right foot of my cougar, and now we're going to cast this foot. So we need a plate. We're going to put our plate down. And now we need our kinetic sand. Mom, Dad, again? So I want you to open up your kinetic sand. We have a few different colors that we had. It doesn't matter what color you had. It's all going to do the same thing. So I want you to get it nice and flat. So you're just going to play with it a little. And you got to have it deep in. Oh, look, I'm already making a mess. You want to have it deep enough that you can push into the sand with your track. And then I want you to build up a lip all the way around it, and that will hold your plaster of Paris in when we pour it into the mold. And you can kind of test. You're like, does that fit? No. I need to make that bigger. Okay, so we're just going to make it bigger so that my paw print will fit, because right now it won't. So can you see how I did the lip? Can you see how I did that? There's kind of a, an edge that I've made all the way around it. It doesn't have to be huge, like a centimeter or two. We're, there's not that much plaster of Paris. It's not going to pour everywhere. Made it nice and thick for you. We're going to mix it up nice and thick. So it's, um, but we need to have a bit of a lip. So then test it again and see if your paw print fits in there. If it does, then I want you to set it on top and I want you to give it a push. Really push it in there. Okay, give it a push. Now we're going to very gently, very gently lift it out and see if we got an imprint. See if we have a track that we can cast. We do! You see it? Look at that thing! Yes! Now we have to mix the plaster of Paris. So what I've given you is half a cup of plaster of Paris and you are going to need one quarter of a cup of water. That's what I have in here, okay? One quarter of a cup of water. Ask for mom or dad's help if you need it. My edges have fallen on my kinetic sand. That's okay. No biggie. Okay, so we are going to dump our plaster of Paris into our tinfoil bowl. And then you guys were also given a popsicle stick. Time to bring that out. Okay, get it all out of there. And then you're gonna take your quarter cup of water and you're going to pour it on top of your plaster of Paris powder. Now, I have a wooden spoon. You guys have a wooden stick. You are going to very gently stir it. This isn't time for crazy egg whipping stirring. This is time for very gentle, could be a little bit messy, but don't be crazy, stirring. And you can see that it's pretty thick. And you're going to stir it until it's all the same consistency and there's no big lumps in there. Feel free to kind of chop it up a little, make sure all those lumpies are gone. We don't want any lumps in our, in our animal track. So what my kids and I do is we actually pack separated out half cups of Plaster of Paris and little tinfoil bowls or empty yogurt containers are great too. And then I always have water with me. And we mix up when we find tracks. We mix up some plaster of Paris and then we cast animal tracks. It takes about 30 minutes, so don't do it when you're in a hurry on your hike. But if you have time and the bugs aren't going to eat you alive, it's certainly a really fun thing to do. So this is the consistency I'm going for. Can you see kind of what it is? This is the consistency I'm looking for. Not too liquidy. It can be a little bit runnier than this, but not much. Once you have this consistency, we're going to very gently pour it onto our track. All right, so here we go. Oh, so nervous. Every time I've done this, it's been successful, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Get as much of it out of here as you can. Oh, it's great, good. And then you're gonna very gently smear it over your track. Very gently. 
And then I try to smooth out the back here a little bit. Just so when I write what animal it is or what animal I think it is on the back, I have somewhere to write it. If I leave it all spiky, I have nowhere to write it. So this is what I have. Yours will look something like this. And now we're going to leave it alone for 30 minutes. Nah, you're going to leave yours alone for 30 minutes because I cheated again and I already did one. Look at it. Right. So when you peel it out, the kinetic sand is going to be really stuck to it. That's okay. You can just brush it off. This is where your mom might get it. Brush it onto like an empty, an old pillowcase or, or a tablecloth or something that you can take outside and shake. Okay? Don't do it on the carpet. Don't do that. Somewhere where mom can help you clean it. Or you could take it outside and do it there too. And don't drop this. It's breakable. Okay? So you're just going to brush it off. Some of the sand will get stuck in there. That's okay. It still looks so cool. And on the back, I want you to write what it is. It's a cougar. How much fun was that? So I will show you guys what that looks like in 30 minutes. I will do a little blip at the end of this video to show you how it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed my animal track casting. This is my last video for the expedition uh, state or exploration station with the Northern Rockies Museum this summer. I am passing off the videos to Maddie for the rest of the summer and she has some seriously fun stuff planned for you guys. Um, have you ever made a quill from a feather? Do you know what a quill is? You're gonna learn with her. Uh, she's also doing um, spinning wool with a drop spindle. I actually learned how to do drop spindle wool spinning when I was a teenager and uh, I actually still own my drop spindle and it's really fun. So Maddie is going to teach you how to make your own drop spindle and then you can spin your own wool. And did you know that you can spin wool from cats and dogs if they have long enough fur? Did you know that? Yeah, it's hard, but you can, which I think is amazing. So again, if you want to be in the draws, you need to PM me your name, your age, and a number that you can be reached at so that we can tell you that you've won. And then you need to follow the Hinton Municipal Library where every Monday they announce the winners of the weekly draws. I think the grand prize draw is middle of August. And I showed you what the prizes are. People, get your names in. Parents, guardians, adults, if you're watching, get your name in. I don't need to know your age. It's okay. But get your name in so that you can get into that grand prize draw again, new camp stove that shoots 9,000 BTU. Are you kidding? Hello. We want to win prizes. I hope everyone is staying safe. Um, I'm sure a lot of parents are breathing a sigh of relief knowing that the Minister of Education announced today that schools will be opening this fall. That's very exciting. Um, safety measures in place, of course. And keep in mind, our water table is launched. She's running, there's water pouring, we got tons of toys, everything gets disinfected and cleaned after every single family that comes to see it. And um, head over to our website at northernrockiesmuseum.com to find out more fun things that we are up to. We also have our new book, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's called A Snowflake's Journey, and it's the story of a snowflake named Journey who travels from the Athabasca Glacier down the river all the way to Rural Lake, and stuff happens to him on the way, and he has adventures. He meets the elk on the shelf. And if you didn't know about our elk on the shelf book, we've got that one available too. He is an elk who wakes up in his field and it's covered in litter and he's very sad. And he decides he's going to become an elk on the shelf so that he can remind children and watch over them um, to help them recycle. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my three contributions to the Exploration Station, and I cannot wait to see what Maddie has in store for you. It all looks really, really fun. Don't forget to register for the packages from the library. They are completely free. You just need to give us your name so that we can get them prepared for you. They are available for pickup at the museum the Tuesday before the video on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. So again, Send us your names and your ages and phone numbers so that we can enter you in the draw and we will see you next week.
Hi guys, so it is crazy late. It's been a day, but I t promised you that I would show you what this thing looks like when we get it out. And yes, I am hiding in my bathroom because it is the safest place for me to unveil the cougar paw. Plus, fun fact, I actually record a lot of audio in my bathroom because it has pretty good acoustics. Plus there's no sound bounce. I know, weird things. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. Alrighty, fingers crossed that it works. So when we lift it out, I told you it would be stuck. Don't worry. You just give it a quick little brush here. I see it. Do a little, little dig in between the toes of the cougar, but you know what? Without a solid brush out, that's pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed the animal tracks, and uh, I hope I see you at the water table sometime soon. Have a great summer, guys.